Hey, everybody, and welcome to this edition of 15 Minutes with True Crime Podcast. This is Joe, and I hope this finds both you, your family, and your loved ones safe and doing well and healthy. I received a call from Jesse James Hollywood, and we spoke about some things, including an update on the coronavirus and how the California Department of Correction and Rehabilitation is handling it, and they seem to be doing a good job. We also spoke about Nick Markowitz and his family a little bit, as well as Ryan Hoyt, who I like to get on the show so we could hear from him and have him tell us his take on what happened both before, during, and after. I'm working and hoping that happens as I think it would answer some questions that people have. Just an FYI, the movie Alpha Dog, which is about the case and what supposedly happened, is now airing again on Netflix. If you'd like to see this show keep going and would like to see it get better, please donate to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That is paypal.me slash J-O-E T-O-M-A-S-O. Also, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, or if there's someone you'd like to see me interview, please email me at insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Once again, that's insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Or you can snail mail me at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut 06516. Also, please help me out by clicking the like and subscribe button. And if you want to be notified whenever I drop more content, please click the notification tab as well. And now, here's this edition of 15 Minutes With. I have a... Oh, how's it going, brother? Hey! I did get a, I did get a, uh, an email, because now they're doing these JPEG emails from uh, someone that I think, I think it's uh, Hoyt's aunt, actually. I was going to bring it out here with me to read to you. Mm. I wasn't quite sure if it was her, but, but it seems like it, it, it's the only person it could be. But uh, it was interesting. She she uh, she was positive and said uh, positive comments about Ryan and uh, just commented that he, she let she let him listen to a portion of the podcast and also that he's uh, pulling for me, pulling for my freedom. Uh, well, there, there's there's so positive. I, I did get something from a girl by the name of Susan um, who actually was really into the um, podcast between you and I. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I just wanted to tell you the heads up on, uh, uh, cause she wants me to talk to Ryan. I think you should. If, uh, if, he, if he can get the opportunity, you know, with, uh, Ryan, I heard he just got denied in his appeal. Okay. I haven't had any contact with Ryan or his family for 15 years. So it kind of took me aback when I got that email. Right. Uh, you know, he's in there fighting for his life and, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with his case and what happened with his lawyers and everything. But no, I'm not. Yeah, had, had a, a assistance of counsel from what I heard. Okay. His lawyers actually got disbarred. Um, one of them was drunk during the trial. She definitely had never tried any murder cases or death penalty cases before. So wow. Every lawyer that I talked to, including my own attorneys, always mm. said, no matter what, he's going to get a new trial. Mm. Well, they just denied him. I'm not sure if it was in the, the higher courts or if it was in the California Supreme No, I, I, I don't know. I know it said something about him actually like going back to court, but that was uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to write her again yeah. and uh, tell her that I know, uh, you know, I know he just lost uh, the appeal and then uh, see what, um, you know, what she says. But to be honest, I was real disappointed with the, just hearing the decision of the appeals court. I mean, it's not really about the particular case. It's just about the, the appeals courts in general. Mm -hmm. And they could deny something that's so egregious. You know, I'm, in, uh, I saw a thing on uh, Jody Arias the other day, and it's similar, but his was even more egregious because the, the attorney took money for book rights to the story. She took, like, a bunch of money from the family, and mm -hmm. then she was in there drunk and just horrible. Even my trial attorneys, every, any attorney that I've had that have examined his situation, they just said, God, he had the worst attorneys. See, really? I just, I, I, if, if, there's, if they're listening to this podcast, you tell Ryan to keep fighting, keep doing his best to, uh, to uh, rehabilitate himself. Any programs that are available, if he's on the road or if he's coming down here, they're letting those guys come to the lower levels now. Mm -hmm. To just show people that he's changed and, and do whatever it takes to uh, to try to make a difference and to help people, to have an eternal perspective, to try to uh, just realize now this time with the, the pandemic and everything, we have to uh, it's on getting closer to God and, and, and just having pure intentions and doing the right things to uh, you know, just to have an impact, impact on our community here, have our 
an impact on the community out there in a positive way. Right. Speaking of the pandemic, how are you guys doing in there? I, last I heard, you guys were getting ready to go back on lockdown. We are uh, we're on a modified program now. It's been getting tighter and tighter. Um, I think the politicians here in California are doing a great job. I think Gavin Newsom's doing a great job, and it's and it's uh, went down the, the line to our warden here is really smart, Marcus Pollard, and mm. Deputy Warden uh, uh, Miss Buckle. Mm. They're all they're doing a great job. I, I mean, I, there's been uh, they've been effective in everything they're doing. There hasn't been any cases. And last I heard, you didn't have any cases of corona there, um, or they had a couple suspected cases, but they wound up being nothing. Uh, no, I don't think they do, but I think they realize the gravity of the situation, and they know how the, the ramifications of what will happen if it does get in here. Right. It's, it's very difficult to, this environment, you're, you're living in close quarters, so, you know, at least here you're in two-man cells. Dorms, like if you get over to, to Echo Yard here, you got people where there's no way they'll be able to contain it. And even here, here you have a lot of old people. You got a lot of people that are that are medical, uh, here, right. high risk medical. So it's pretty. I mean, they'll have a, They know the ramifications, and I think they're taking all the precautions necessary that are possible, and they're doing a good job. Well, I can tell you that luckily you're not in Kansas right now. Um, I don't know if you heard about Lansing or not, but there was an, a riot over the coronavirus. I saw something. Yeah, I saw there was a bunch of people. There was uh, people protesting in the streets, and uh, I saw something briefly with the mayor or somebody out there just saying you're going to prolong the situation. Oh, oh no, Lansing, Lansing yeah. Correctional, Kansas, actually had a full blown inmate riot on the inside. They even took the bubble over, smashed it up. It was pretty bad. Really? Yeah, they were saying that they couldn't social distance, two guys per cell, and then the cells were, you know, like right on top of each other like they were back in the day, you know, like the open cells that are right next to each other, going right down the tear. The guys got sick and tired of it. They weren't getting any PPE or anything. Speaking of which, I actually had a woman from Missouri talking to me. They weren't getting any PPE either. Are you guys getting any soap now or what's going on with that? Any what? Soap. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Like soap, like bars of soap. Oh, yeah, they give us state soap. But you're, are you, you're, but you're, you're getting it because I got told last. I, I talked to somebody, and the last I knew, you guys were like limited to like one bar a month, and then I was hearing that you guys were having issue even getting stuff to clean the tears with. Nah, uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. Right here, they got it under control. The okay, good. Orders out here spraying the phones with disinfectant. They're wiping it. What I do, I mean, we've been built up in this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've taken care of myself for a long time, for, for for a long time, and you got a lot of guys in here that have been through a lot. Right. So we're built up. I don't think. I don't think. I was taking before the. Before the porters were cleaning the phones with disinfectant, I would take a little thing of water down Ajax and my handkerchief, wipe the phone, get on, bam. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to limit myself. I'm not, I'm not going in. I don't go to the medical. I don't go to the dental. Uh, my celly, he's got medical issues because every, pretty much every cell, you're going to have a guy that's got a lower, lower deal. So I'm right. on my celly's a medical guy with a walker. I talked to Dave Gilmore a couple times. I talked to Jeffrey Price uh, last week. Jeff's all right. Yeah, I actually, you know, Gilmore's going to give me his story. Price gave me his. In matter of fact, he says I'm the first person on the outside he's talked in the last 17 years. A lot of guys are, are really, there was somebody, I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but they actually gave me full-blown, this is what happened. It was one of the gang members. Bill Redford? No, uh, Sam, yeah, Sam uh, Redman. There we go. Samuel Redman? Sam's great. Sam's yeah. life without parole guy. I know. So he was uh, double life without parole in uh, 150 years. He actually, yeah. um, people heard his story. I had him give me his, you know, he, he literally rolled his whole story to me. And a lot of people yeah. really connected with him. That was a real good interview. How are you doing in there right now? Great, guys. A lot of these guys, uh, you know, I'm great. As good as it can get. There's nothing I can complain about. I'm just uh, getting closer to God mm. and uh, just trying to have an internal perspective, Joe. And uh, just we're, we're seeing, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing that you know 
a lot of the little things don't matter now. It's about family and it's about the community coming together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God gives us strength in our weakness. So that's what I'm, I'm, I've been focused. I've just been in there. I finished all my work because everything shut down as far as the groups and everything. Mm -hmm. So I finished uh, a lot of my college work and I've been in there just reading the Bible. Started reading the Bible from the Old Testament, uh, you know, praying a lot of it thinking about Nick Markowitz and Susan Markowitz a lot mm -hmm. and praying for them, believe it or not. Um, you know, God bless them, listen to this thing, or anybody that knows them, God bless them, and, and, and I hope that their, you know, whatever blessings they have, they're multiplied. Uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm working on, on, stay, on staying positive and just trying to remain uh, productive in this downtime, you know. Good. I mean, I'm glad that you're keeping it, you know, you're keeping level-headed, you're keeping, you know, you're keeping upbeat through this. I mean, I know with keeping everything on a semi-lockdown, lockdown procedure thing that you're probably, you know, feeling kind of closed in in there right now. Well, I think we're used to this. I think the general public's not used to this stuff, and it's stressful. We've been quarantined. I've been quarantined for 15 years, so this is a time for me to it's big for me because I was just on that on that grind. Just we're not getting anything, done. and I know there's so much that needs to be done, and I want to make a difference, you know. So every day I'm, I'm trying to do positive things. I've been uh, writing for the newspaper here to uh, shout outs for our podcast and some of these guys that have dedicated their lives to changing their lives uh, and, and have participated in that, and I uh, just giving, you know thinking about inviting uh, participation and consensus. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's what people don't realize is the fact that right now a lot of people on the outside are complaining about the lockdown out here, and they don't realize that, you know, guys who've been on the inside, this is nothing new to them. I mean, even when you get a full-blown lockdown on the inside, you've been through it before. It's not as bad for you guys as it is for people who are on the outside and not used to it. I think it gives them a perspective, though, um, to a degree, not a great degree, but it does, get, does get them a perspective as to, you know, what it's like when you lose your freedom. Yeah, you know, I think we all we all have had times when we're living in the moment. And it's like I said, we got to have an eternal perspective and just think about how we'll be remembered. And, uh, you know, think about those, having those pure intentions, you know. Now's a good time to strengthen the community to, to prevent further harm. It's a good time for us to think about uh, what we're going to do in the future and just building. What I've seen here, it's a shame what you were saying about what happened out in uh, Lansing because mm -hmm. that's just exacerbating the situation. This is a time to come together, mm -hmm. and I, I think here everybody kind of shut down. There hasn't been any incidents. You know, the only alarms I've, I've heard since this pandemic went off was like some guy was out running laps and he, like, pulled his hamstring or something, which is rare in this right. particular yard. You know, so there hasn't been any real stuff. I think everybody's taking time out and just seeing there's more important things than all these little uh, issues that we have in our lives. And, and we got to just, like I said, focus on God, get closer to God, focus on our families, and, and focus on, uh, you know, healing. Okay. Healing what's been broken and figuring out where to start, where to start from once we get this thing settled. Mm -hmm. Jess, this is going to cut us off in a second. I'm looking at the time limit right now. If you had anything to say to anybody right now, what would you tell them about what's going on, what you know, or what they should do to wind up not going into prison? I would just say that uh, there's strength in our weakness. There's things that only God can provide us. So, in essence, uh, weakness is a doorway to power. You know, so... Right now, it's just a time for reflection and uh, family and community and, and being positive and, and just getting through this and having a positive impact. Great. And then, uh, like I said, so you're saying, too, is that the... We have 60 seconds remaining. Told you it was coming. Um, what you're saying, too, is that, you know, everybody at your facility is actually handling this really, really good, which is great to hear. They, if California... Do you... Right here... Going through the cell painting right now. Samuel Redmond's in my cell block. Mm -hmm. Walked by me. So they still got the critical guys working here. Good. Okay. Um, this is going to disconnect us. So uh, I, I want to hear from you soon, okay? So give me a call when you can. Definitely. All right. Stay safe in there. You. Uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna, I'm going to pray for success in your endeavor, and we give that praise and glory to God. 
Thank you. See you all, Joe. Thank you, Jess. All right, be good. Good night, stay, man. Stay safe, stay healthy. Yep, you too. Bye-bye. Appreciate you. Bye. This call and your telephone number will be... Hey guys, and thanks for listening to this edition of 15 Minutes With. This is Joe Tommaso, and I hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the show. I hope that you, your family, your loved ones all stay safe and stay healthy, and I hope to see you guys back really soon. Once again, if you'd like to help me keep this show going and would like to see it get better, please donate to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. That's paypal.me slash J-O-E-T-O-M-A-S-O. And if you have any questions or suggestions or if there's somebody you'd like to see me try to interview, please email me at inside the razorwire at gmail.com. Again, that is inside the razorwire at gmail.com or you can snail mail me at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut, 06516. Again, stay safe, stay healthy. Hope to see you again soon.